Here I'm going to show you how to use the VLOOKUP function. And I'm going to show you a number of examples that'll get you comfortable using this function, including on basic text values, on a number range, and when you get the values from a separate worksheet over here. So by the end of this tutorial, you should feel quite comfortable using the VLOOKUP function. And if you're not certain why it's so great, check this little table out right here. I can hit delete and the manufacturer size and color values are gone. I can go ahead and input a value for the part and they match up perfectly with the values in this table, Cyberdyne, large and bone for the color. That is all done using the VLOOKUP function. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. All right. Now, first thing, I don't want you to be intimidated by this worksheet. All that I have done is changed the formatting just a bit. So if we go to the View tab and check Grid Lines, you will see it's the regular worksheet. These are regular cells. I just changed the background color over here, added a border, and made this background color for this cell white, and then added three borders down here. That's all that was done. These three cells are the only ones that have anything in them. So let's go ahead and get started with the VLOOKUP function. I'm gonna go ahead and delete these guys. And let us zoom in just a little bit and go to the right. The first thing you need to know about your setup when you're using the VLOOKUP is your data. So your data set, your data table. The VLOOKUP can only get a value to the right of whatever you are going to look up. So I'm going to look up the part number that's in the leftmost column, I can get anything to the right of it, the manufacturer, the size, the color. If something was to the left of part, I could not get that value using the VLOOKUP. There are other lookups, index match, and new lookups for Excel 365 that do that really, really well, but not the VLOOKUP. Thankfully, usually the value that is most unique that you are going to use for a lookup will be in the leftmost column. Ours is part number, they are unique values, so it's very easy to match them. And for the VLOOKUP, all we're going to do is say, hey, look in this column, find a value. If it's this value, okay, great, you found it. Now I tell the function from which column to return a value. It will be in the same row, just a different column. That's all that you do with the VLOOKUP. So let's go ahead and do it with the manufacturer right over here. Equals VLOOKUP tab. And there we go, we have a few arguments, the lookup value, the table array, column index number, and range lookup. The lookup value is what you're going to look up. It's that unique value. So we want the part number. So we just click the cell that has the part number in it or that the user will type the part number into, and that's our lookup value. Comma, next argument, table array. Where are we going to get the data from? And this is our table of data, so we select it. Just make sure that the leftmost column is where you will find your lookup value. So I'm looking up part number. So part is the leftmost column of the table array. Then a comma for the next argument, column index number. From which column would you like to return a value? You could return it from any one of these columns in the table array. The first column for this one, even though that's the lookup value, you could return it. The second one for manufacturer, third for size, fourth for color. We want manufacturer, so we're going to input two. And then a comma for the last argument. This is an important argument. You can check true for an approximate match. That's going to come in handy when we use a number range in the next worksheet. Or false for an exact match. We want false. So double click this or type false. And that's it, that's the complete VLOOKUP right there. Close up the parentheses, hit enter, and you get Cyberdyne for ASC-5, perfect. Now let's go do it for size and color. Repetition is the key here. The more that you use this, the easier it's going to be. Lookup value right here, table array right here, Column index number, size, is in the one, two, three, third column. And false for an exact match. That means that if it cannot exactly find our lookup value here, it will simply return an error. So close it up, hit enter, and there we go, we get L. A last one, 
lookup value, table array, comma, and column index number one, two, three, four. Then false. Perfect. You see, the more times that you do that, the easier it will be. And now we have our working VLOOKUPs, and it allows us to do a little data table lookup in this nice, neat way. But now let's go one step further and make it more robust, because I said that if it cannot find this value, it's going to return an error. So if I hit delete, it cannot find this value, this blank nothing. So we get these errors. And what we can use in pretty much any version of Excel, at least from 2007 and on, is the really great if error function. So you just surround the VLOOKUP with the if error. The VLOOKUP will now be your first argument. We go all the way to the end. We do a comma. Then we get to the argument that is a value if error. So if this guy right here returns an error, what do you want to return? Well, I'm going to make it so it returns nothing. So I just do two quotation marks, close it up, enter, and no more error. So it's nice and neat. If error all the way to the end, nice and neat. What you could do, sometimes people like to do this, is you could say not found. So you can output text, you can output a value, you can output the result of another function, or you can make it empty like this. And then when we go to search for the value, the value fills in correctly. Cyberdyne M Ivory. Perfect. So how you do it is up to you. I, in this case, am going to go ahead and leave it blank. And here we have our completed VLOOKUP with the IF error. Now, this is the way that you will most often use the VLOOKUP. That's how I mostly use it. That's how most people use it. But now let's go use it with a range of numbers. This is where it gets a little bit confusing at first. It's just kind of another thing to remember. So here I've got some students, Thanos and Satan, and no name. And then we have some scores. And we want to attribute a letter grade to those scores. So over here, we have a legend. And we give a letter based off of their number score. Now, how you have to set this up is a little bit interesting. And this is what can be easy to forget. We're setting up a number range, and we're going to use it with VLOOKUP. You must make it lower to higher. It must be ascending order. And how this is going to work is the VLOOKUP right here. It's going to take this value, 98. It's going to go over here to this table and say, hey, do I find 98? Nope, nope, nope. OK, well, what is the next number below 98? 90. And then it's going to return the value for 90. It goes over here for 81. It says, hey, do I find 81 anywhere? Nope. What is the next lowest value below 81? 80. Perfect. And that's why for the letter F, we make it a 0 instead of 50. Because if you were to make this, let's say, 50, then this VLOOKUP would give us an error. But we want to give someone who gets 0 a letter grade. So we give them just F for failing, because that's everything below 60. This is probably the hardest thing to remember in this case, is how to set this up correctly and how it's going to work. But once you've got that done, the VLOOKUP is really going to be quite easy. Let's go here and build our VLOOKUP. Equals VLOOKUP. Lookup value, just like before. We're looking up a number this time, that's all. This cell right here. Table array. It is this guy. Remember, the leftmost column is going to be the lookup value column. So we have a number here. That's where we're going to look up our score. Then for the column index, it's in the second column, 1, 2. So we put 2. And now for range lookup, this time we put true for approximate match. And if you forget how to order your numbers, it tells you right here the values in the first column of table array must be sorted in ascending order. So just a little reminder there. Let us set this guy to true. Hit enter. And there we go. So if Thanos gets 98, it's an A. If he gets 90, still an A, because 90 matches. If he gets 89, it doesn't find 89. It gets the next lowest number, 80, which is B. So he gets B. 
Now let's go here and let me show you one thing where it's really nice when you have something like this. You want to copy down the VLOOKUP. You don't have to enter it for every person. You just have to make sure that you get the references correct. So B2, we can leave this at a relative reference, no dollar signs. That means when we copy it down, this cell reference will update. Every row down we go, it will change by one row. But our table array will never ever move. So select your table array and hit F4 and put dollar signs around the columns and the rows. And you have now frozen this so that when we copy the VLOOKUP down, this will never change. Hit enter, and now we can just double click the quick fill handle, copy it down, and everything is good. And you will see when we double click here, this updated here, the lookup value, but the table stayed the same. And we go down here, it is the same thing. Lookup value updated, this stayed the same. So that'll help save you a lot of time with the cell references. And if we wanted to go a little bit quicker with the first examples on the first worksheet, I could have done that, where I could have made all of these absolute cell references and then copied the VLOOKUPs down and then just updated the column index number. But I wanted to go through three examples so that we could repeat everything over and over just to help get you comfortable with the VLOOKUP function. But now you know the basic way that's most often used, you know the number range way, and let's go with one final example that's going to combine a couple of different things. One is a concept, and then one is how to get values from a separate worksheet. So here we have our lookup table on a separate worksheet. Otherwise, everything else is the same. Lookup value in the left column, and it's all good to go. So what I want to show you here is a problem that I encountered the other day where someone was trying to figure out how to get a value from this right here. So this is our part number. How do we use a VLOOKUP with that? Well, just think about it. This is the lookup value. This lookup value is here within other text in a cell. And there were a lot of records like this all that followed the same pattern. The lookup value was within an open and closing parentheses at the start of the cell. So the only thing to think about here is how do I get that guy out so I can use it in my VLOOKUP? Once you rip that out, extract it, here you have a basic regular lookup value. The thing that's scary is when you combine everything into one VLOOKUP, it starts to look a bit gnarly. So my recommendation is always to build your complex functions and formulas piecemeal. Build them in separate chunks and then combine them into a final formula. So here I'm going to show you how you could get this part number out into this cell. It's going to look a little bit scary if you're not used to the functions I'm going to use, but the point of it is just to show you get it out however you can get it out, then you can use it within the VLOOKUP just like a regular lookup value. So I will delete this right now, zoom in just a little bit, and don't worry about these guys, and let us get ASC-1 out of here. Going to use the mid function for that, and the text is this cell. That's where I want to get the value from. Where do I want to start getting the value? Well, it will always have an open parentheses and then the value I want. Value I want is in position 2, so start number is 2. Then the number of characters. How many characters do I want to get out starting from position 2? Well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in this case, but we want to account for the possibility that it's not just dash 1, it's dash 10, dash 101, so it's not just one number at the end. It could be a larger number. So to do this, we use the find function, which is going to allow us to find a character within a cell. Here I want to find the closing parentheses, so I do the closing parentheses within quotation marks, then comma. I want to find that closing parentheses within this cell right here. Where do I want to start looking for it? Actually, this time, this does not matter, so I do not need it. We can start looking from the beginning of the cell, no problem. So I close up find. Find will tell me where it finds the closing parentheses. But find is going to give us too many characters because we want to start getting a value from the second character. Find just tells us where it found the open parentheses. And the open parentheses counts from the first character. That's going to sound confusing. So I'll just close up the mid right now and then fix it after you see the problem. Close up the mid. Now we have ASC-1, closing parentheses. We have two additional characters at the end because we have 
started to get the value from position 2. So we just fix this by doing minus 2. If you're not used to it, that can seem quite scary. But like I said, the point is just to get it working. I got it working. Life is good. Now I'm just going to copy it down here. Great, life is working. This one works. Now we create our VLOOKUPs. Let's delete these guys and make some VLOOKUPs. We do a VLOOKUP just like we did before. Equals VLOOKUP. But this time for our lookup value, we can either select this cell to make our life easier, or oftentimes when you want to combine everything into a nice simple formula, what you're going to do is just copy this, a nice big formula, perhaps not simple. Go over here, equals VLOOKUP, and then we paste that in for the lookup value. I can paste the entire formula in there, but it's okay. I made sure it worked over here first. Everything's good. I don't have to think about it. I hit a comma and I go to the table array. Now, table arrays on another worksheet, so what do I do? I hit nothing on the keyboard. I just use my mouse. I go over here, go to where my table is, select my table, and you'll notice that in the formula bar up here, it is filling in. Then I hit a comma to go to the next argument, column index number. What do I want? I want to get manufacturer. Manufacturer is from the second column. So I type a two, and I just finish my formula here. It seems kind of funky doing it like this, but we still have our argument list over here hovering over the worksheet in a kind of awkward way. So we can still see what we need to do. And next up, comma, do I want true or false? Well, I want it to be an exact match. So I type false. Then you can close up the parentheses, hit enter, and it will automatically take you back to this worksheet. And ASC-1 is Acme. ASC-1, Acme. Perfect. And now we have a much larger, kind of scary looking VLOOKUP. But since we did it in pieces, nice and slow, everything works. But now don't forget to make some of your references absolute. So I'm going to select A2 to D6 for the table array, hit F4 to put dollar signs around it so we can copy this around and it will not change. For the value right here, A4 and A4, I'm going to put a single dollar sign in front of the column so that I can copy this to the right and that will not change. And now I should be good to go. The only thing that can change when I copy this formula around is the row reference right here for the lookup value. So it'll only change when I move it up and down. And let's go ahead and test it out right now. I will move this guy down. Tyrell Corp ASC-3, is it so? Yes, it is. And let's copy both of them to the right. Now, all we have to change here is go here and find this right here. The column index number, make it a three. And column index number here, make it a four. And actually what we would do now is finish an entire row first and then copy it down. So everything will work. And here we have our nice, neat, working VLOOKUP. And by this point, you can now see how what we did on the very first worksheet over here seems so simple. Just a tiny, cute little VLOOKUP function. Do not get intimidated. Take everything step by step, go slow, and repeat the process as many times as you can, and you will soon find the VLOOKUP function to be nothing. It will be so easy for you, I promise. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.